Hello students, in today's session we are going to discuss about band theory of solids. In order to study this band theory, let us see what is the necessity of discussing this band, band theory and what made to, made to study this band theory etc. For that we have to see the failure of free electron theory. Let us have the introduction on this. Based on the electrical properties, all of us know that solids are classified into three categories, namely insulators, semiconductors and conductors. All of us know conductors are the materials which allow the electrical current to pass through and insulators are the materials which do not allow the electric current to pass through and semiconductors they have the conducting property, electrical property lying in between those of insulators and conductors. Now if you look at this figure, the first figure shows the insulators, say plastic, glass, ceramic etc. They are all made up of insulators which do not allow electricity to pass through and also thermal energy to pass through. Coming to the extreme right figure, here the tip of this plug pin, this is made up of a metal, it is a good conductor while the cover, outer cover of the wire, it is not a conductor, it is an insulator. Coming to the central figure, this is a chip, IC chip which is made up of semiconductor whose conduct, conducting property lies in between those of conductors and insulators. Now let us see what are the different properties of these conductors or metal, almost all metals are conductors. Let us look at the properties of these conductors one by one. First point is that these metals or the conductors obey Ohm's law. All of us know Ohm's law is V equal to IR. That is to say voltage developed across a conductor is directly proportional to the current passing through the conductor V equal to IR. Here R is the constant of proportionality. That is to say larger the current more is the voltage developed. In other words you say that as per Ohm's law voltage across the conductor varies linearly with the current. If you plot voltage versus current graph taking voltage along x axis or current and current along y axis, it will be a straight line. So always all metals obey this Ohm's law, voltage varies linearly with the current at a given temperature. Second point is that metals have high electric and thermal conductivities. Electric conductivity and thermal conductivity is due to the presence of large number of free current carriers. In metals, there are large number of free current carriers, therefore all metals are very good conductors of electricity and thermal energy. Another point you have to note, all the metals at low temperature, resistivity is proportional to fifth power of absolute temperature, rho is proportional to T to the power 5. At very low temperature, resistivity changes or resistance changes with that absolute temperature as per this relation rho is proportional to t power 5. But above a particular temperature known as d base temperature, at that temperature resistivity is proportional to absolute temperature only not the power of t but simply rho is proportional to t. Next coming to next point, near absolute zero the resistivity of certain metals tends to zero that is to say if you reduce the temperature of a conductor of a metal, its resistance also goes on changing. Resistance decreases with the decrease in temperature. At very low temperature in some cases, the particular metal or the material shows special feature, special characteristics known as superconductivity that is the zero resistance condition. And that happens at very low temperature nearer to absolute zero. Next comes the electrical conductors conductance varies in the presence of magnetic field and application of pressure. That is to say, if you place a current carrying conductor in a magnetic field, the conductivity changes or the resistance changes. Similarly, there is an influence of external pressure on a current carrying conductor. On the application of pressure, again the conductivity changes, flow of current changes. And the ratio of thermal to electrical conductivity is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. So these are all the points 
applicable to all metals. Just now I have mentioned different properties. Another point you have to see as per all these observed facts, all these facts can be explained on the basis of free electron theory of metals, but that free electron theory of metals fails to explain certain observed facts such as see as per free electron theory electrical conductivity of the material is proportional to electron concentration or proportional to number of free electrons per unit volume larger the number of electrons available more is the conductivity that is the concept under free electron theory. And if you see the conductivity of divalent materials having more number of electrons trivalent materials having more number of electrons, but the conductivity is less. As per free electron theory, conductivity should increase with the concentration. Here the concentration is more in these metals, in these materials, but conductivity is less. That is where the free electron theory fails to explain these observed facts. And also it fails to explain the existence of different types of materials conductors, semiconductors and insulators. In simple we can say that the free electron theory cannot explain the conductivity process, conductors, insulators and semiconductors. For that one has to go for band theory of solids, formation of bands in materials. And also the free electron theory fails to explain the positive Hall effect in certain materials like bismuth, zinc, etc., etc. And it fails to explain the relation between conduction electron of material with valence electron of, electron of free at, atoms. Therefore, one has to go for the band theory of solids. So, this band theory of solids will be discussed in the next part.